Just to, to talk about, uh, you know, evolution, I always thought it made us better and better, and so this is homo perfectus now, but it turns out it only cares about your survival, it really doesn't give a shit about your happiness. It really didn't care about the individual. So I, that, that's a revelation, and, and so that when you feel, okay, I feel this envy, I feel this shame, I feel these, you know, the, these kind of, you're haunted by these inner demons, they were placed there because it worked hundreds of thousands of years ago. We were supposed to feel competitive, otherwise nobody would have stood on two legs, you know. We were, all of this was in place, but we live in a world now where technologically we were geniuses, but emotionally we never grew up. Thoughts are 1% are of what's going on in your mind, so you don't have to take them that seriously. Yeah. I mean, 99% of you is busy, you know, making sure that your food is going through your digestive tract, you're growing fingernails, each cell has to divide into another cell. If you had to think about that, you'd never be able to go shopping. <laughs> so the 1% is just giving you information. Don't walk into the wall. You know, it, memory has to work. Otherwise, you get up every morning wondering, am I a lesbian or am I a clown? You know. You're made, to, uh, you're made to have a kind of reality, but it's not who you are. You're much bigger than your thoughts. So I, I did research it, and it turned out, that's just the way it was, that mindfulness, which to me sounds way too vegetarian, and cognitive therapy had the best results as far as being able to distance yourself a little from your thoughts. You still need them, but you don't need the garbage. It's sort of um, like picking out the stuff you need, and then that list that makes you crazy. I don't have to buy the cat food at four o'clock in the morning. You know, I, I do need to shop for those pair of shoes, but you know, I can shut the computer down at six. I mean, it, it's almost like there's a watcher, there's an observer, of course it is. There's somebody watching the thoughts. That doesn't mean all the time, it just means when you stand back and kind of observe them, and you have to work on that, it, otherwise everybody would have it. If you sort of observe them, you sort of see that you're falling into your habits, like when I get that I'm not good enough or, um, you know, my mother was right, I'm an idiot, I sort of now see them as CDs that, you know, are habits that I were implanted. And so I go, oh yeah, that's CD number 45, oh yeah, income. I even have it now, like you're looking at me like I'm not making sense, which I might not be. <laughs> So again, you sort of learn to watch them a little bit, and once you observe, you can break the habits. The thoughts never go away, they're only gone when you're dead. That's a mm. clue that you've died. There are certain things that happen in certain ages. You know, we all know about puberty. You know that the, you know, the pimples are there for a reason, and nothing is a surprise because everybody tells you about it. But the rest of the stuff, the other stages nobody ever <laughs> mentioned. All right, from 18 to 25 years old, for both men and women, follow your hormones during these years. Have as much sex as you can, but don't make any commitments because right now your biology is in the sex driver's seat while your mind is out of town. Mm -hmm. 25 to 30 year olds, for women, who, who, uh, for women, you have five years where you can guilt-free build a career or travel. After 30, you have children and you'll always feel guilty. Whether you choose to stay home with the baby, giving up your career, or go to work and leave the baby, it's a lose-lose situation. Okay, 30 to 45, it's almost impossible at this point to picture that someday something called menopause will fly into your window. For men, it's penile dysfunction. <laughs> if you're in your early 30s, forget I said these things and just have a great time laughing, dancing, having sex in lit rooms. <laughs> By 45, for women, if you were thinking of having kids, think again. Well, maybe don't think because chances are you're low on eggs. Now you should start to think about what a great life is waiting for you without children. You'll be free to do what you want, when you want, and not have to think about someone else all the time. The mistake people make at this age is to go get a cat or dog. <laughs> then they're slaves to their pets and can't go out for fear that the pet will have a heart attack in their absence. <laughs> Just do a few more. 45 to 50, for men and women, if you're not married at this stage and want to be, I suggest going on the last minute dot dating site or just find anyone with a pulse and throw a ring on it. <laughs> the good news is a culling might have happened where one of your married friend's partners has died. <laughs> so now is the time to swoop in there and get the living one. <laughs> For 50 to 65? Oh, go on, you do that. Should go I on. do it or you? This is hilarious. Okay. For men and women, if you're married and have been for a long time, you'll notice that the stories are on a loop. You've heard it all before. You will deliver the punchline of jokes before he, she does. Inevitably, inevitably you've both run out of material. 
For women, at this point, if you're still with the husband, you can stop shaving your legs and start gaining weight without fear. <laughs> Unless you're with an alpha, and then I'd say keep shaving and throw in a facelift. <laughs> if you've married an alpha at this stage, he's either long gone or going tomorrow, so don't make plans for dinner. <laughs> If you're with a nice guy, he won't notice or mind that you're turning into a fat carpet. <laughs> 65 to 99 years old, I have no idea. I assume that if you're with a nice guy, you don't even have to sleep in the same room, eat in the same room, or even breathe in the same room. <laughs> when you get seriously old, you won't even know he's there. <laughs> if you are still in love by this age, still exchanging lar large amounts of oxytocin, you've won the jackpot. <laughs> so, yeah. You're, when, you're, when you're fearful, when we go into the overdrive in cortisol, you don't think clearly. So if you send fear to your kids, <laughs> they won't think clearly either. Your job is to, you know, lower, find ways, I don't know if it's mindfulness or, mm. you know, a thousand different, get your fucking cortisol down because otherwise you hand it on to your kid. And if you can manage to cool yourself, we work like neural Wi-Fi, I always like that expression. It goes to your kids, to their friends, to the neighborhood, to the planet. That's politically responsible. Yeah. You know, fix yourself and then go worry about the world. I feel um, this contradiction between wanting to help and wanting to give my all to fight for you know, the development of the human race to be more empathetic and stop ruining the planet and causing suffering amongst one another. But also this just desire to get away from modern civilization entirely and just kind of piss off to the wild yeah. and just be an earthling. Um, I don't know if you ever, I'm wondering if you kind of came across this, this contradiction um, in your sort of journey exploring evolution and what to do, whether to, to run off to the wild, to stay here and help humans who are continuing to destroy everything or to try and find a combination oh, of both. that's good, that's a good question. That wow. is a good question. You, how old are you? How old are you? Um, 22. Boy, are you ahead of the game. You are, that's pretty evolved there. Um, you know, part of, there is no one self. You know, it's, the, everybody always thought, if I go to a shrink or whatever, I'll find this black box, you know, that's me, like in the car, you know, plane crash. Th there is, there is no you, in a way. We are a, a combination of infinite, you know, potential. Everything is a contradiction. We want to be alone, and let, yet you want society. You know, we, uh, everything. You know, you want to, I, I, I put on makeup, I want to be attractive, and yet that disgusts me. You know, I, I want people to like me that I don't even like. Mm -hmm. It's so inbred in us, these contradictions. I don't know how you ultimately make a decision. I think at 22, you can sit on it for a little while, <laughs> you know, and marinate. And then as, it, as you get older, if you're, tr if you're honest with yourself, like I was, you know, involved in a very narcissistic job, but it paid a lot, eventually it made me sick. And so I had to jump ship. Eventually that, you know, it kicks in and you lose your mojo. You might say, I can't deal with the world and I don't want to save it. But you haven't done anything wrong if you move into the wilderness. Just forgive yourself. But at 22, Everything is possible. I wouldn't make a decision now, but you're so interesting. I'd stick around and save the world. 